Mr. Claren here from Claren Maths. Today we're going to go through the whole of geometry in the National 5 Maths exams, especially for the 2023 National 5 Maths exams. That includes gradient, arc length, area of a sector, volume, Pythagoras, angles and circles, and angles and shapes. The gradient formula, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, is a formula you need to know. It will be used in this section where there's not many questions, then usually it will be lumped in with straight lines. So check out the video on straight lines to get more on that. But here's a quick example using it. It says find the gradient of a line passing through the points 3, 2 and 5 minus 8. So I label one of my points x1 and y1 and the other one x2 and y2. So then I can write down my gradient formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And carefully substituting in my numbers, I've got negative 8 minus 2 over 5 minus 3. Negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. And 5 minus 3 is 2. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. And we'll be done. SQA National 5 Maths 2019 Paper 2 Question 13 on gradient. Find the expression for the gradient of a line joining A is 6, 9 to the point B is 4P and 4P squared. I'll give your answer in its simplest form. Don't worry if it was algebra in this question. You can still just do it using the gradient formula and you'll just have an algebraic answer. So A is X1 and Y1 and then we've got X2 and Y2. So M is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which equals 4P squared minus 9 on the top, and X2 is 4P minus 6 on the bottom. You'll get a mark just for substituting it in, but then we need to tidy that up so it's now become algebraic fractions. So we can factorise the top and maybe the bottom and then work on it there. So 4p squared minus 9 is a difference of two squares. So that is double brackets. Square root of 4p squared is 2p. The square root of 9 is 3. So it's 2p and 3 in both brackets. Plus in one, minus in the other, all over. And 4p minus 6 has a common factor. The common factor would be 2. So I can take 2 out as a common factor. 2 times 2 is 4. So it's 2p. 2 times 3 is 6. So it's minus 3. You get a mark for factorising the top. And then we can go ahead and cancel down to get our final answer. So 2p minus 3 and 2p minus 3 can be cancelled to leave us with 2p plus 3 all over 2 for our final answer. Arc length. So arc length, a little reminder, is defined as the length of the arc between two radiuses. It could be drawn in a full circle or it could be taken out of the circle and just drawn as a little arc. But to find the arc length, you do angle divided by 360, because it's 360 degrees in a circle, times pi times diameter, because pi times diameter is circumference. And in National 5 Maths, you will have to either just directly use arc length and find the arc length, or sometimes you'll be given one of these other things in the arc length and you'll have to maybe work out the diameter, the radius or the angle. So you have to work backwards with arc length. Let's have a look at some examples. So on arc length, we've got SQA National 5 Maths 2015 Paper 2 Question 10 had this question. The pendulum of a clock swings along an arc of a circle with centre row. So you've got 65 degrees here. The pendulum swings through 65 degrees. The length of the arc is 28.4. Calculate the length of the pendulum. So it's, we're working backwards from arc length, but it mentions length of arc, so we can substitute in. So the writing down arc length, Again, equals angle over 360 times pi times diameter. When we substitute everything in we've got, so it's told us the arc length is 28.4, so I can write 28.4 equals our angle, which is 65, over 360 times pi, but I don't know the diameter, so I can just write times diameter. Now, I find the easiest way to work back here is you could either try and rearrange it directly or what I like to think of is usually I do divide by 360 and times by everything else so for going backwards I'll do the opposite which means I'll times by 360 and divide by everything else so I can immediately write down that d equals starting with 28.4 the left hand side 
I'm going to divide that by well, everything on the top that's normally times. So 65 times pi is going to go on the bottom. But then the thing that's usually divided is 360, so I'm going to times the top by 360. And I get my d straight away that way. And then I just go to a calculator and work that out. So I just do 28.4 times 360 and then divide by 65 times pi. I can use brackets around the top and brackets around the bottom. And if you do that, you will get an answer for D, which is 50.07 centimetres. Now, we'll usually be finished here for calculating the diameter, but it asks us to find the length of the arc, the length of the pendulum. Well, that, if that was to go all the way around, it would be a circle and that would be a radius. So the length of the pendulum is half that. So our length is equal to 50.07 divided by 2, which to a reasonable degree of accuracy is 25 centimetres. SQA National 5 Maths 2017, Paper 2, Question 14 on arc length. The diagram shows part of a circle centre O. It says the radius is 6.4. The length of the major arc is 31.5. Calculate the size of the reflex angle AOB. In other words, this angle here. So we're just using arc length again and working backwards. So we'll just write down everything we've got. So arc length, I'll just write AL equals angle over 360 times pi times diameter. We've got the arc length, that's 31.5 on the left. We've not got the angle, so I'll just write theta or x or anything you want over 360 times pi times, now be careful, the diameter is not 6.4, that's the radius, so I double that to get the diameter of 12.8. Now if you can get that far, you get a mark, angle over 360 times pi times 12.8, and then we need to work backwards, so again, remember, we start with this, so our angle equals 31.5, and I'm going to divide by everything on the top, pi times 12.8, and we're going to times by everything on the bottom, 360. And we get a mark if we can get that far, and then for a mark for our final answer for calculating our angle, our angle theta, when we do 31.5 times 360, divided by brackets pi times 12.8, it's 282.003 or to a reasonable degree of accuracy, 282 degrees for our final answer. Next screen, National 5 Maths 2018, Paper 2, Question 2 on arc length. The diagram below shows the sector of a circle, centre C. It shows the radius is 7.4, the angle is 320 and it asks us to calculate the length of the arc. So this is a straightforward one. We can just write down arc length equals angle over 360 times pi times diameter. Always write down your formula first. Your angle is 320. We've got that over 360. And we're times them by pi. And our diameter, well, it's told us 7.4. So we need to double that. So that is 14.8. Get a mark for writing down our formula. We get a mark for getting our angle, 320 over 360, or fraction, sorry, 320 over 360. We get a mark for our final answer, which worked out at 41.32 centimetres. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 4, had this arc length question. It says the radius is 30, the angle is 240, calculate the length of the major arc. Now this is paper one, so it's non-calculator, so I'm going to give you some hints for this one. You still start off in the same way, don't be worried. Arc length equals angle out of 360 times pi times diameter. Now we can just substitute in. Our angle is 240 out of 360 times by pi times by 60. Double 30 makes 60. So now at this point, you might be wondering, what can I do? Well, to calculate this with a non-calculator, always best to simplify any fractions first. So I'm going to just going to take it beside 240 over 360. I can drop the zeros to straight away to, to get 24 over 36. And then I'm looking for two numbers at times to get to make 24. Uh, two numbers, a number that goes into 24 and 36. Well, 4 goes in, I know that straight away, so I'll divide by 4, 
Four sixes is 24, four nines is 36. Oh, I can see three goes in as well. And you could have got there quicker by dividing by 12. Three twos is six, and three threes is nine. So our sum now can be replaced with this fraction. I've got arc length is two thirds times pi times 60. And I'll leave the pi to the end. So I've now got two thirds of 60. So I divide by three and times by two. Three twenties is 60. 20 times 2 is 40, so I've got 40 times pi. So that's 40 times 3.14. So we need to do this sum. So there's lots of ways to do it, but times and by 40 is the same as times and by 10 and times and by 4. So again, at the side, you can just do 3.14 times 4. 4 fours is 16, carry 1. 4 ones is 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 threes is 12, so you get 12.56, so that is 10 times 12.56, which is 125.6, and our units were centimetres. Next one on arc length, 2022 National 5 Maths Paper 2, question 10. An attraction at a theme park has a carriage attached to an arm, as shown in this picture. The arm swings from A to B along an arc of a circle centre C, as shown below. The length of the arm is 50 metres, and the length of the arc is 69.4. Calculate the size of the reflex angle ACB, in other words, this angle here. So it's just arc length, because it's length of arc. So I'll just write down what I know. Arc length equals angle over 360 times pi times diameter. Substitute everything in. So my arc length is 69.4, that equals my angle, which I don't know, over 360, times pi times 30, because 2 15s is 30. And you'll get a mark for substituting in, and then we need to rearrange it in the same way we've been doing. So I start off with, to get my angle, 69.4, divide by everything that was on top, pi times 30, times by everything that was on bottom, 360. So then we can just work that out in a calculator by doing 69.4 times 360 divided by at brackets pi times 30, and you will get an answer of 265.08, or 265 degrees, and that is three marks. Area of a sector, very similar to arc length, but this time to get area, it's the area of the actual bit. It's angle at 360 still, but then it's times by the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Let's look at some examples on this one. So 2014, paper 2, question 13. We've got, the picture shows the entrance to a tunnel, which is in the shape of a part of a circle. The diagram represents the cross section, and it says the center zero, You've got the angle 50 degrees. You have got, this is seven meters. Calculate the area of the cross section of a tunnel. So this is quite a long, hard one to start us off with. You've got to calculate the area of the arc and then add on the area of the triangle, which is using trigonometry. So check my previous videos on that, half A, B, C, and C. Let's start off with the area of the arc though. So area, remember, equals angle out of 360 times pi r squared. So this time be very careful our arc is going this way. So that is going to be 310 degrees because 360 minus 50 is 310. So 310 over 360 times pi times 7 squared. We get an, 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 a mark for knowing the angle and then we get a mark for working that out which is 132.56. Centimetre squared. So we've got, done our arc bit, but we now need to do our triangular part. So our triangle bit is a half a b sine c. So for the triangle, I'm using the start of the formula sheet, a half a b sine c, where c is the angle, and a and b are the lengths either side of the angle. So it is 0 0.5 times 7 times 7 again times the sine of 50. Doing that in a calculator, 
we get 18.77 square centimetres. So then our total area, we've got two answers so far for four marks. Our total area, so that's three marks. We get a mark for knowing we need to add to get our total area. So 132.56 plus 18.77, which gives us a final answer of 151.3 square centimetres. SQA National 5 Maths 2016 Paper 1 Question 3 for area of a sector. The diagram shows a sector of a circle, centre C, and the radius is 20, the angle is 45, calculate the area of the sector without a calculator. So we start off with the same way, area equals angle out of 360 times pi r squared, and we calculate that by putting 45 out of 360 times pi times 20 squared. Two marks so far, one mark for getting the ang refraction and one mark for substituting in, and now we just need to do lots of work to get the actual answer for our final mark. So fractions we simplify, so 45 into 360, well 45 goes into 360 eight times, so I get 1 eighth times pi, 20 times 20 is 400, so I do an eighth for 400 is 50, times pi, and then again, you can just at the side do 3.14 times 5, 5 fours is 20, 5 ones is 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 threes is 15, you get 15.70, so that gives you, that's times by 5, so it's 10 times 15.70, which is 157 centimetres squared for our final answer. Another quick way at this point would be to times by 100 and then divide by 2. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, Paper 2, Question 17 says, in the diagram below, AOD is a sector of a circle with centre O, and BOC is a triangle. In the sector AOD, the radius is 30 centimetres, and the angle is 75 degrees. So we've got AOD, we know that this bit here is 30 centimetres. And it also says, in the triangle OBC, O to B is 38, so this whole bit's 38, so we know that that's, we could put a wee 8 here, I suppose. And we know that O to C is 55, so we can, we can draw that in there and see that that's 55 centimetres. What is it asking us? Well, it's asking us to calculate the area of a shaded region. So this is a com combination of area of a sector, which is why it's in here, and area of a triangle, which is in the trigonometric um, section. So let's start off, we can do any one you want, but it's going to be a takeaway, because if I do the whole area of a triangle, I get all the area shaded in, but then I need to take away the area of the sector to get this shaded bit here. So it's a takeaway triangle minus sector. So let's do area of a triangle first. From the start of the exam paper, the area of a triangle is a half AB sine C, so that's 0 0.5 times, well, remember it's the angle in the two sides, either side of the angle, so it's this side, 38, and this side, 55. 38 times 55 times the sine of 75 degrees. You put all that into your calculator, and you get an answer of 1,009.39 bunch of numbers, centimetres squared. So you've done your triangle, you get a mark for that. You now need to do your sector, so let's go back to our sector work. So we've got angle out of 360 times pi times r squared. So let's write that, area of sector is our angle out of 360 times pi times, and we need to identify our radius, so let's go back up. The radius is just 30 centimetres, so it's 30 centimetres squared. So you get a mark there for identifying your fraction, and you get a mark for writing down fraction times pi times 30 squared. And if you want to get out in a calculator, you get 589.04 centimetres squared. So, so far we have got three marks, there's two more marks. The next mark is for working out you need to do the triangle minus the area and writing that down. So our shaded area 
is equal to our 1009.39 minus our 589.04. And we get a mark for just writing that down, and then a mark for our final answer, which is about 420.3 centimetres squared. And obviously I'm putting dot, 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 because I've not rounded, but 420 would be fine, or 420.3 centimetres squared would be fine as well. Volume. So, in National 5 Maths, there's three main volume things you need to know. The volume of a sphere, 4 thirds pi r cubed. The volume of a cone, 1 third pi r squared times h. And the volume of a pyramid, which is a third of times the area of the base times the height. You also need to know your standard basic stuff from before Nat 5, like the volume of a cuboid, length times breadth times height. The volume of a cylinder, which is pi r squared times height. And you might have to use them. But these three main ones are National 5 ones, and they're given to you at the start of the exam paper. So for any volume question, check the start of the exam paper. So first volume question, SQA National 5 Maths 2014, paper 2, question 7, had this one. An ornament is made in the shape of a cone with diameter of 8 and a height of 15. The bottom contains a hemisphere made of copper with diameter 7.4 centimetres. The rest is made of glass. Calculate the volume of the glass part of the ornament. Give your answers correct to two significant figures. So this is our glass part and this is our copper part. So we need to work out the volume of the cone, then the volume of the hemisphere, and take that away to get whatever's left in the glass bit, because the glass bit only goes up to here, it's not the full cone. So let's start with that. So for our cone, we go to the start of the exam paper and write down the formula for the volume of a cone, which, remind you, is one third pi r squared times h. So that's one third times pi times... And then the radius of our cone, well, the cone's radius actually is given here. The diameter is 8, it told you in the question, so the radius is 4. So it's one third times pi times 4 squared times the height of 15. And if you put all that in a calculator, you get 251.32 with a bunch of other numbers, so that's centimetres cubed. So we've done our cone, now we need to do our hemisphere. So the volume of our hemisphere, well, it's going to be a half of a sphere. So that's a half times four thirds pi r cubed. Pi. The radius is half of the diameter. The diameter we can see is 7.4, so that's 3.7 cubed. So you get a mark here for doing 4 thirds pi r cubed, and then you get a mark for half, and then half in it as well. So we get 106.08 when we do all that. Centimetres cubed. We've got two answers. Now we need to remember it's a takeaway. We're, ta we're doing the whole cone minus the hemisphere. So the volume of our glass part, I suppose we could say, because it is about the glass, is 251.32 with a bunch of numbers minus 106.08. Now when I say a bunch of numbers, I'm just taking the numbers in my calculator minus the numbers in my calculator. I'm not rounding at this point. That's what the dot, dot, dot signifies. So we get a mark for doing take away, and we get 145.24. And then we need to check if we have to round the answer. Round your answer to two significant figures. So that means I need to round one, two, cut here. So I get one, five, zero centimetres cubed to two significant figures. And we're done there for our fifth mark. QA National 5 Maths 2015, paper two, question six on volume. We've got two parts to this. Part A says... The Earth is approximately spherical with a radius of 6,400 kilometres. Calculate the volume of the Earth, giving your answer in scientific notation, correct to two significant figures. And then part B says, the approximate volume of the Moon is 2.2 times 10 to the 10 cubic kilometres. Calculate how many times the Earth's volume is greater than the Moon. Okay, so let's start off with part A, which is a straight volume question. Once we've done part A, we're going to do part B, which is a scientific notation question. 6a, since we're using a sphere, it's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Get that from the start of the exam paper. So that's 4 thirds times pi 
times the radius 6400 cubed. That equals 1.098 times 10 to the 12, which we round that to two significant figures. So that's 1, 2, 1 1.1 times 10 to the 12 kilometers cubed for our final mark. Part B, the approximate volume of the moon is 2.2 .2 times 10 to the cubic kilometers. How many times the Earth's volume is greater than the moon's? How many times? So I need to do the Earth's volume divided by the moon's volume. So step one, identifying that we need to divide. So we do 1.1, the big number, times 10 to the 12, divided by, or the divide sign, 2.2, times 10 over 10. Get a mark for that. And then once we divide, just make sure we time put that in the calculator with brackets, divided by brackets, you get 50. And we're done there. Now a volume question. SQA National 5 Maths 2016, paper two, question seven. A carton is in the shape of a large cone with a small cone removed. So it's a takeaway. The large cone has a diameter of 32 and a height of 24. The small's got a diameter of 18 and a height of 13.5. Calculate the volume of the carton. And again, rounding involved to two significant figures. So we do the volume of the big cone minus the volume of the small cone. So let's just do that, right? So the volume of our big cone is, remember, volume of a cone is one third pi r squared times h given at the start of the exam paper, one third times pi times, now the radius is going to be 16, because it's half the diameter, and the height is 24. So we get a mark for doing that and getting an answer. The answer to that would be 6433.98, with a bunch of other numbers, centimeters cubed. Now we do the small cone, the volume of the small cone, one third times pi times the radius, which is nine half of 18 squared, and times the height of the small cone, which is 13.5. We put all that in our calculator and we get 1145.11 and a bunch of other numbers, centimeters cubed. So we've got one answer, two answers for two marks. And then we get a mark for knowing that we need to take away. So our volume is equal to 6433.98 minus 1145.11. And that gives us, using the unrounded figures to take away, 5288.87. And then we get an for rounding our, our final mark, two significant figures it says, so that equals 5300 units, centimetres cubed, for five marks. Now a volume question, SQA National 5 Maths 2017, paper two, question six. It says a spherical sweet is made of in caramel sphere, even with chocolate, a cross section of sweet is shown. The diameter of the suite is 22 millimetres and the thickness of the coating is 3 millimetres. Calculate the volume of the coating. So the volume of the coating is not a full shape, so it's a takeaway again. So I need to do the volume of the big sphere minus the volume of the small sphere and that will give me what's left in between. So it's a takeaway. So let's do our big sphere first. The volume of a big sphere, remember from the start of the exam paper, 4 thirds pi r cubed, 4 thirds times pi, and the radius, well we need to do a bit of maths here I suppose, if I draw a dot out here and go to here, well that's half of 24 which is 12, so it's 12 cubed, and that gives us 7238.229, 7238.229, centimetres cubed, millimetres cubed in this case. Now the volume of our small sphere is 4 thirds times pi and the radius of a small sphere, well let's do a bit of maths up here, so I need to go from the middle to here. Now we already know that this bit is 24, but the coating is 3. So if I take away 6, 3 from either side, 24 minus 6, 
is equal to 18. 18 divided by 2 for the radius is equal to 9. We get 9. So it's 4 thirds times pi times 9 cubed. In a calculator, we get 3053.628. So that means the volume of our coating is equal to 7238.229 minus 3053.628. That gives an answer of 4184.601, which when rounded to two, three significant figures, I think, in this question, well, that means I need to go 1, 2, 3 and round here, so it's 4180. 4180 millimetres cubed for our final mark. Okay, now a volume question. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, paper 1, question 17 had this one. A square base pyramid is shown in a diagram. The square has a base length of 6 and the volume is 138, calculate the height. So this is a working backwards volume question. So mass stages, there's a few ways you could do this, but mass stages is always to write down my formula, then work backwards. So from the start of the exam paper, the volume of a pyramid is one third times the area times the height. Okay, so substituting everything in, I've got 138 on this side equals one third times. Now it's a square, so it's six squared or six times six. I'll just write six squared times the height. Today we're going to do 138 equals a third of 36 times h. 138 equals, well, 3 into 36 goes 12, so that's just 12h. And then we can work out h. 138 divided by 12 is equal to 11.5 centimetres. And that is one of the simplest ways to work it out. You could have also just made H the subject of the formula and worked it out, but there you go. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, paper two, question seven had. A toy company makes juggling balls in, balls in the shape of a sphere with a diameter of 6.4. Calculate the volume of one juggling ball. Give your answer to two significant figures. Quite a simple question. You need to use the volume of a sphere, four thirds pi r cubed. So that's 4 thirds times pi times, and you need to remember to half that diameter, so it's 3.2 cubed. You get a mark for getting the sum, and then a mark for working it out, which is 137.2. And then a mark for rounding the two significant figures, which will be here, so I'll go 140. 140 cubic centimetres and one done. A volume question, SQA National 5 Maths 2019, paper 2, question 8. I had this one, a traffic board is in the shape of a cylinder with a hemisphere on top. So it's an adding one, cylinder plus hemisphere. The board has a diameter of 24 and a height of 70. Calculate the volume of the board. So I'm going to have to do the volume of a cylinder and the volume of a hemisphere. Now, to do the volume of a hemisphere, I need its radius. I know its diameter is 24, so the radius must be 12. So I can say that this radius here, just marking my diagram, is 12. There's another piece of information I need. I need the height of my uh, cylinder. So I need to do 70 minus this 12, because it goes all the way up. 70, take away 12. That gives me 58. Need to do that work to be able to do my sums. The volume of our hemisphere. Just remember, hemisphere is half, half a sphere. So it's a half times four thirds times pi times 12 cubed. Put all that into a calculator and you get 3619.1. Centimeters cubed. Now we do a volume of our Cylinder. Cylinder is area base times the height, so it's pi r squared times height. If you're not going to remember a cylinder, it's the same as a cone without a third on it. A, third, a cone's a third of a cylinder. So it's pi times the radius of 12 squared times the height, but we worked out earlier, is 58. 
We do all our sums in a calculator and we get 2628.5. Centimeters cubed. So now we could just need to add our volumes together. So the volume in total equals 3919.1 plus 2628.5, which gives us a grand total of 2987. 29857 point and a bunch of stuff who cares point six and a bunch of our stuff because we're going to round it now to three significant figures so three significant figures one two three we need to round here so it's two nine nine zero zero two nine nine zero zero centimeters cubed make sure you write down your units Okay, next following question, SQA National 5 Maths 2022, paper 1, question 3, paper 1, non-calculator for a change. It says, the diagram below shows a cone with diameter 20 and a height of 60. Calculate the volume, take pi is 3.14. Well, first thing we do is write down the volume of a cone, which is 1 third times pi r squared times h. Okay, so... Substituting everything in, that's 1 third times 3.14 times r is 10, half the diameter, and the height is 60. Now, whenever I'm doing a non-calculator volume question or anything with pi non-calculator, I'll leave the 3.14 as late as possible to the end. I'll do all the other sums first, and hopefully it'll be easier. So, you get a mark for that, and then your final mark is just for getting the answer. So, you need to do all the work to get the answer to get two marks. Don't worry if you can't do it too. One's good enough getting that substitution in there. So doing the work, I've got one third times 3.14 times, well, 10 times 10 is 100. So I've got 100 times 60, that's 6,000. So then I'll do a third of 6,000. Well, 3 goes into 6 twice, so that gives me 2,000. So I've got 2,000 times 3.14. So at the side, I can do 3.14 times 2, double in a number, 8, we get 2, we get 6. So we get 6.28, so that gives me 6.28 times 1,000, that's 6280 centimetres cubed. For our final mark. SQA National 5 Maths 2022, Paper 2, Question 3, had this volume question. A concrete gate post is made in the shape of a cuboid with a sphere on top. The sphere has a diameter of 0.4 metres. The cuboid has a square base of length 0.48 metres. The total height of the gate post is 2.4. Calculate the volume of concrete needed. So it's an, a volume adding question. So I'm going to need the volume of this cuboid plus the volume of the sphere. Now, to get the volume of a cuboid, I'm going to need its height. So I'll immediately mark on the diagram this bit here. And you can work that out easy enough because total height is 2.4 minus 0 0.4 gives me a height of 2 metres for my cuboid. Right, let's start with the volume of a cuboid. Not given in the exam because it's below National 5 level really. So it's the area of the base times the height. Well, the base is a square base, so it's 0 0.48 times 0 0.48 times 2. Again, calculate a job that one point four six zero eight. Meters cubed. Okay, volume of our sphere, which is national five level, that's four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. Well the diameter is zero point four, so the radius is zero point two. FJ. 0 0.0335 meters cubed. So our total volume is equal to 0 0.4608 plus 0 0.0335, which gives us an answer of 0 0.494.
No need to round because it doesn't ask us to, but if we did want to round, we could say either 0.49 meters cubed would be fine. If you look at the start of your question, each of these numbers were two significant figures, so our answer can be two significant figures, but we don't need to round. Pythagoras in the National 5 Maths exams. You've got Pythagoras in circles, the converse of Pythagoras' theorem, and 3D Pythagoras to work with. And a reminder of Pythagoras. If I have a right angle triangle, as shown, this is a right angle, then if I square the two shorter sides and add them together, it gives me the square of the longer side. So in other words, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's have a look at some examples. Pythagoras and circles to start with. SQA National 5 Maths 2015, paper 2, question 12. The diagram below shows a cross-section circle of a milk tank. The depth of the milk is shown here. The radius of the circle centre O is 1.2 metres. The width of the surface of the milk in the tank is represented by ML is 1.8. Calculate the depth of the milk. Quite a standard question, this, where it looks like a kind of circle with a bit chopped off or sometimes you get a tunnel and quite often if you have to calculate a length inside a circle this will be Pythagoras and you have to make a right angle triangle somehow. So let's just take some information we're given and put it on a diagram. The radius is 1.2 so we could go from here to here is 1.2. We know the width of the milk in the tan is 1.8 so if I draw a line up to here or meet it at right angles and we know that that's going to be 0 0.9. And we have to calculate the depth of the milk in the tank. Well, we know the distance from here to here is already the radius, so if I can calculate this little bit, I can just add them together to get the depth. So I'm just going to call that bit x. If you can get a diagram that looks like that, a right angle triangle, you've got a mark already, you then just need to work with that. So we're finding the shorter side of a right angle triangle, so x squared is going to be 1.2 squared, take away 0 0.9 squared, because I'm finding the shorter side. And you get a mark for writing that down. And then a mark for calculating x, which is the square root of our answer. Our answer is about 0 0.63. That gives me 0 0.79. So then the depth of the milk must be 0 0.79 plus the radius already, because it then continues another 1.2. That gives you 1.99. And the units are meters. And we're done there. Pythagoras and Circles, SQA National 5 Maths 2016, paper 2, question 15, had this kind of picture where it is a bottle of perfume and it's part of a circle. And it says, this is the height of the label, it's the center is the circle of O. AB is a chord length 9, radius is 6.6, .6. calculate the height, so we have to go from here all the way up. So if I take that line straight into the circle, I've got the radius already, so I just need this missing bit. So I add that line in, so we can call that x, and this will be 4.5 centimetres because it's half of 9, and then we're good to go. So I, I mark for getting that triangle, and then x squared will be... The hypotenuse squared minus the other side squared. Remember x, we need to square root it, so we need to do, we can do 6.6 .6 squared minus 4.5 squared and get an answer then square root it, or you can just put that in brackets in a calculator and you'll get an answer of 4.8. So then the height of our label is just going to be 4.8 plus the radius, which is 6.6. .6. That gives you 11.4 centimetres. And notice I'm not rounding, so I'll just put dot, dot, dot. 11.4 would be fine. And that is a nice four-mark question. SQ National 5, Maths 2017, Paper 2, Question 13. Had this diagram. Two identical shapes are used to form a logo. Each part is a part of a circle. And the centres are shown. The radius of each circle is 14. The logo has half tone symmetry about a midpoint, so now I was just saying you can turn it. And AB is 48. Calculate the height of the logo. Okay, this looks a little bit harder than it is. 
we just need to get a right angle triangle out of this. So let's just pick one of these circles. If I drew a line to here, and then made the radius, that gives me a right angle. Now, do I know the radius? Yes, it's 14. Do I know anything else? Well, I know the whole length of this is 48. So from here to here must be 24. So from here to here, half in that again, must be 12. And now I can call that x and get my distance. Now, once I've got that one, it's going to be the same on here. So then it's just adding in a radius and a radius. So I can just work from there. So x squared is 14 squared minus 12 squared. You've got two marks so far, one for the right angle triangle and one for the answer. So then x is the square root of the answer to 14 squared minus 12 squared, which is 7.2. And therefore height, well, we'll just do it in stages. We have got a radius plus the answer x, and then we've got that again, so double that. So we can just write down the radius, remember, was 14. 14 plus 7.2, and then times by 2, I'll just add 14 plus 7.2 again. And you get an answer of 42.4 centimetres. But five goes to circles S Square National Five Maths 2018, paper two, question 13. We have got this shape and we know the radius is 13, this length is 20, calculate the width. So if I knew here to here is 13, so I need this little bit here. So I can add that in, call that X, make a radius, that's 13. Right angle triangle then, so that is 10. So we know that X squared equals 13 squared minus 10 squared. So x is the square root of 13 squared minus 10 squared, which equals 8.3. Not rounded. So then the width is just our radius 13 plus our 8.3 that we've just worked out to give us a final answer of 21.3 centimetres. And we're done there. Green National 5 Maths 2019, paper 2, question 18. Had this question. It's a cartoon snowman. And it's got a lot of information about the head is a small circle with center S. And the diameter of that from here to here or here to here is 15. The large circle has got a center of T. And it also lies on the circumference of this one. And A and B lie on the circumference of both circles. Calculate the height of the snowman. It was quite difficult. But if we notice, we know this line here is 15, so we're really just being asked to calculate the radius of the big circle. Now, we can calculate it anywhere. So if I go inside this bit from here to the outside, that's a radius of the big circle too. I'll draw that in. And we already know of some facts. We know that'll make a right angle, but we know that the diameter of a small circle is 15, so that is 7.5, but so is this. So taking that outside of a circle, just to be clear, we have got 7.5 here and 7.5 here with a little x here. So x squared is 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared. So that means that x equals the square root of 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared, which we can calculate and then square root or just use brackets to get about 10.6. So that means now that our height is just, well, let's just double check. It's going to be the diameter to t, which is 15, plus the radius of the big circle, which we've just worked out is 10.6. That gives you 25.6 centimetres. Pythagoras and Circles, S Square National 5, Maths 2012, Paper 2, Question 8. Had this question, a train tunnel has a cross section with a horizontal floor. The diagram is a cross section as shown. Calculate the height of the tunnel. So again, we add in a right angle here, call that x. Add, it'll be x plus the radius, which we already know is 2.9. 
and this will be 2 because it's half of 4. So x squared is 2.9 squared minus 2 squared. So x is the square root of 2.9 squared minus 2 squared. We can calculate that before and then square root it, or just square root the whole thing in brackets. That gives you 2.1. And therefore, the height is 2.9 plus 2.1, which equals 5 metres. Well, our fourth mark. Converse of Pythagoras. So this is when you're given all three sides, or you can know all three sides, and you have to work backwards with Pythagoras to see if it's a right angle or not. Let's have a look at some of these questions. You have to be very careful with these. So we have got the diagram below shows the position of three towns. It tells you all the information, but there's your diagram with the three sides. And it says, is high town directly north of low town? Well, if it is, that means that that's east, which means that's a right angle. So when you're doing the converse of Pythagoras, you keep it all separate. So that's your left-hand side, and that will be your right-hand side. Well, your left-hand side would be 85 squared plus 75 squared. And your right-hand side would be 110 squared. Do not write that those are equal. You do not know if they're equal yet. You're trying to check if they are. So you get both of them down, but it's completely separate. You then evaluate or work out from both. So the left-hand side, 12850. And the right-hand side gives you 12100. Now, they're not equal. So then you can compare and say, well, if, if this plus this equals this, it is a right angle. But if this plus this does not equal this, it is not a right angle. So we just have to write that down. Since 85 squared plus 75 squared does not equal 110 squared, not a right angle. Therefore, high town is not north of low town. And there we are. Basically, National 5 Maths 2017 paper 2 question 7 had this one, and it says triangles A and B are shown and they're put together to form a big triangle. Is it a right angle triangle? Well, we're going to have to identify our three sides first of all. So looking here, that's 8 centimetres there. 8 centimetres. And on the other side, we have got this one, which is the part of the big B, 19 centimetres. And then on the bottom, we're joined together, so it's 16 and 6, to make 22 centimetres. So keeping it all separate, our left-hand side and our right-hand side, we've got 8 squared plus 19 squared, or we've got 22 squared. Working both of them out separately, 8 squared plus 19 squared is 425, and 22 squared is 484. A mark for getting 18 squared, 19 squared, and 22 squared. A mark for working both of them out, and then for saying something. So the something is 8 squared plus 19 squared does not equal 22 squared. Therefore, not a right angled triangle. You could write by the converse of Pythagoras, but there's no real reason to mention it, but you could say that. QA National 5 Maths 2019, paper 2, question 11. Converse of Pythagoras, the diagram shows a jet ski race. The course is marked out by markers A, B and C. It says B is 600 metres from A, C is 650 metres from A, and C is due north of B. Determine whether B is due east of A, well, if it is, it will be a right angle. Now, you cannot use Pythagoras to get this missing side because you're going to try and prove it's a right angle. So we'll start off with the fact that the whole course is 1,500. 600 plus 650 is 1,250. We take that away from 1,500 to get 250 metres, and we just mark that on. We know that's definitely 250. Keeping it all separate, we've got a left-hand side and a right-hand side. A left-hand side is... 600 squared plus 250 squared, and a right-hand side is 650 squared. Do not write they're equal, that's why I draw a little table and keep them separate. We then work out both sides separately. So the first sums gives us 422500, and 650 squared 
if you work that out in a calculator, it also gives you 422500. So then you can say, since 600 squared plus 250 squared equals 650 squared, then angle is right angled, is a right angle. So we could then write what we're trying to say, A is east of B. B is east of A, sorry. And we're done. Moving on to 3D Pythagoras. A squared national 5 maths 2018 paper 2 question 16. So this is often calculating a missing length in a 3D shape, usually with a space diagonal. Chris wants to store his umbrella in a locker. The locker is a cuboid with internal dimensions 40, 40 and 70. The umbrella is 85 metres long. He thinks it will fit in the locker from P to M. Is he correct? You should probably just put that umbrella in the locker and check himself, but let's do some maths. So, we've got 40 by 40 by 70, and we want to calculate the space diagonal. So we're going to go from here, the front to the back. All you need to know is that you can do 40 squared plus 40 squared, and that'll give you the diagonal of this, and then you use the diagonal of this with the height to get this, or all in one go, you can just write 40 squared plus 40 squared plus 70 squared. So that is our strategy. So whenever you're doing a space diagonal, it is the base numbers times the height, all squared, 3D. So then we need to square root that to get our answer. So it's 40 squared plus 40 squared plus 70 squared, all square rooted. If you do that, you get 90. And then just a little statement. His umbrella is 85, we got 90. So yes, because... 85 centimetres is less than 90 centimetres. Done. The SQA National 5 Maths 2022 Paper 2 Question 11, another 3D Pythagoras question, and it's telling us that E, the length of the cuboid is 24, the breadth is 6, so there's my length and breadth, and the height is 8. Calculate the space diagonal from front to back, so it's just 3D Pythagoras, 24 squared plus 6 squared, the base times the height, 8 squared. So I can write 24 squared plus 6 squared plus 8 squared, all in one go. And then we can work out that by doing it's the square root of all of that. So we can do the square root all in one go, just put brackets around the sum, and you will get 26 centimetres. Okay, we move the angles and circles for the A square National 5 maths. Uh, there's three main rules you need to know on top of your standard angles on a triangle add up to 180, angles on a straight line add up to 180, angles around a point make 360. But for in terms of circles, you've got these three diagrams. So the first one is, I've got a circle. If I can draw a diameter and then make a right angle triangle using the two lengths joining at a point on the circumference, it makes a right angle triangle here. The second rule you're going to often use is, if you've got a circle and you start with a radius, and then another radius, and then join that up to make a triangle, then you've got an isosceles triangle, so these two angles are the same size. And the last one you're going to use is, a tangent meets a radius at right angles. So if you see a line outside the circle, just touching it, and it's meeting the radius, not any other line, just the radius, then it makes a right angle, so you can often then get a right angle triangle. Let's look at some exam questions. So we've got SQA National 5 Maths 2015 Paper 1 Question 3 said AC is a tangent to a circle center O with a point of contact B. D is a diameter, F is a point on the circle circumference. And it tells you 77 and it tells you 64, which is all in the diagram. And it calculates calculate BDF. So I usually just start by calculating whatever I can really and just work my way down. So let's have a look at what we've got. First of all, I can see a tangent and a radius, so I know that that's a right angle on that side, but so it is on that side, so these two angles add up to 90. So 90 minus 77 gives me 13 degrees. And then I can start working inside this triangle 
So that's a radius and a radius. I can just mark it on with little direct lines. So I know that the two angles at the bottom are the same size. So they are 13 each. So I can just mark that on. As soon as I've got two angles of a triangle, I can work out the third angle. So angles are triangle up to 180. So 13 plus 13 equals 26. So I do 180 minus 26, which is 154. So I've got 154 in the middle. But now we've got a straight line. So angles on a straight line up to 180. So I'll just move to the next triangle. 180 minus 154 is 26. Now looking at this triangle and knowing everything else, or trying to, well there's a radius and there's a radius. So I can mark that they're the same and therefore at the bottom they're the same. So I can do 180 minus 26 is 154 and divide that by 2 to get 72. And then we can finally move on to our last triangle. A diameter making a triangle, so that is a right angle triangle. So I can put right angle here. And then we've got these three angles add up to 180. So I've got 64, 74, 84, 26 degrees. So we've got the one up here as well. And then we'll just check what's it asking for, BDF, B to D to F, so these two together. And then just write a little statement. Angle B, D, F equals 13 plus 26, which equals 39. Now going by the official mark scheme, you get a mark for getting 13 and a mark for getting 26 and a mark for adding them up. But I find the best strategy is just to fight, try and find as many angles as you can, and at the end the angle will pop out. Unless it's obvious what you're doing. Okay, Angles and Circle, SQA National 5 Maths 2016, Paper 2, Question 15. I had this question, and with the calculate there, you can see what angle we want in this one. But we'll start anywhere you want. So, looking here, we've got 143, so I might as well use angles on a straight line out to 180, and do 180 minus 143 is 37. So I can write that that's 37 right up here. And then we can move down a level is how I put it. So it's a Z angle or an alternate angle are equal. So I can get this is 37 down here. Then a little trick. We've got a radius. Meets a line outside the circle, a tangent at right angles. These two angles add up to 90. So I can do 90 minus 37 because that's a right angle. And that gives you 53. So we now know that's 53 degrees, and because this is symmetrical, that is also 53 degrees. And therefore, angles and triangle add up to 180. So I can do 53 plus 53, which is 106 degrees. So our angle ABC is equal to 180 minus 106, which is 74 degrees for our final arms mark. So a mark for getting 53 and 37, and a mark for your 74. Square National 5 Maths 2017, Paper 1, Question 9, had this one. And with the calculate this angle all the way down here. Now there's lots of ways to do this, but I'll just start from here and work backwards. So these two angles add up to 90, because it's radius meets tangent at right angles. So 90 minus 58 is 68, 78, 88, 32. And now that's an isosceles triangle here. So that is also 32 degrees. And now we can add up with two 32s to make 64. 180 minus 64 to get this one here is 116. So now angles on a straight line out to 180. So 180 minus 116 gives me 64. And then we want a new triangle. I saw Ceres again. So that means I can do 180 minus 64 to get 116 and divide by 2 to get 58. So that means I know that this is 58 and that this is 58 as well. Radius meets tangent at right angles, so these two out to 90, so that gets me back to 32 down here. I know that these two add up to 180, so I can do 180 minus 58, which is 122. And then finally, 122 plus 32 makes 154. 180 minus 154 
is 26 degrees for our final mark. Now obviously there's more than one way you could do this question, but you're getting your marks for 32 here, back down here you're getting a mark for 32, and then a mark for your final answer using standard rules as you go. SQA National 5 Maths 2022 Paper 1 Question 4 had this diagram and with the calculate the size of ACE, so that goes from here to here to here, but as usual I'll just start with the angle I'm giving and work up to it. So I've got 68 here, so is this an isosceles triangle? Yes it is, so I can do 180 minus 68, that is 120 minus 8, 112. So, 112 divided by 2, 2 and 11 goes 5, 56. So we get 56 down this side. Now we can move on to our next triangle. Over here, angles on a straight line added to 180. So 180 minus 68 is 112. And again, you should be able to see that that's a nice isosceles triangle on this side as well. So you can do 180 minus 112 to get 68, and then divide that by 2 to get 34. So you get 34 degrees up here. Tangent meets radius at right angles. So I now know that there's a right angle on this side, but also on the other side. So these two add up to 90. So I do 90 minus 34 to get 80, 70, 60, 56. And then identifying it, what we want, we want me to go from here, A to C to E. So that is this angle inside here. So we didn't actually need that 56, we just need to know that was 90. 90 plus 34 is 124. So our angle is 124 degrees for our final mark. So we get a mark for getting 112 or for getting 56. We also get a mark for getting the 34, then a mark for adding 34 to 90 to get 124. Okay, angles and shapes. SQA National 5 Maths 2018, paper 1, question 9, had this one. And it says, the diagram is a regular decagon. You can count that. It's 10-sided, okay? It's 10-sided. And it says KGL here is 17. You've got a straight line, A, K, and L. Calculate the size of K, J, L. Here. Okay, so we're going to have to do some work to get the angles. We're going to need to know this angle here. But these, all these triangles are the same. And since that's around a point, I can just do 360 divided by 10 to get 36 in the middle. So I know that that's 36 here. And that's an isosceles triangle. So 180 minus 36. That's paper one, so you just need to do it for a calculator to get 144. 144 divided by 2 gives you 72 degrees. So we get 72 here and here. But since all these triangles are exactly the same, that means that that one's also 72. And now we've got angles on a straight line up to 180. So these two make 144 and I need to take that away from 180, so I get 36 back down here. And now it's pretty simple. Angles in a triangle add up to 180, so I do 36 plus 17 away from 180 is 127. So our answer is 127 degrees for our final mark. You get a mark for getting 72 and 72, or for getting 36 down there, then you get a mark for the 127 at the end. Okay, angles and shapes, SQA National 5 Maths 2019, paper 1, question 11. Pam has designed the company logo. She starts by drawing a regular pentagon. So all these five angles are the same, and these are isosceles triangles. And she reverses the diagram line as the circumference of a circle. She then adds the design shown in the diagram, which is here. AF is the diameter of the circle, and it says calculate the size of angle OFB. OFB. So this angle in here is what it wants. So first of all, we can calculate our middle angle as our first starting position for angles and shapes. That is going to be 360 divided by, there's five of them, which is 72. So we know that that's 72 degrees. So A, O, B is 72.
angles on a straight line add up to 180, so I can do 180 minus 72 to get 108. So I know that that one is 108 degrees. But you should be able to see that this is an isosceles triangle because that's a radius and that's a radius. I'll mark that here. So I can do 180 minus 108 again, I suppose, to get 72. 72 divided by 2 gives you 36. So we know that that's 36 degrees. And then we can just answer the question OFB equals 36 degrees. And we're done there. This is a math today. We went through the whole of geometry in the National 5 Maths exams, specifically for the 2023 National 5 Maths exams. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.